Skylops of Ark. You want to race? You sure you want to stick your nose into this kit? <laughs> oh, what we get into, buddy? When you start diving into this Star Wars galaxy, you have so many different options. We crafted the open world in the sense that you have different landmarks, things that can pull you and catch your attention, but also things that you can stumble onto. In our case, for example, the, the approach to progression with experts. Where are they? What can they offer me? How do I reach them? And once you reach them, there's an adventure uh, there for you. On your way there, you want things to make you go, oh, what's that? Throughout the world, there are some hidden or buried treasures that is interesting for Nyx. So Nyx will alert Kay to these treasures with his cute little squeaking. Reward curiosity has been a very central talent for us thinking about the open world. And it ranges from civilians being attacked by pirates to playing Sabak. Sabak is our version of Kessel Sabak. You have to get the lowest match possible with your two Sabak cards, and then you can bet each round and try and win some money. With Favia Racing, you can make bets on tables of the holograms of the races. We have a few different versions of arcade games, a ship shooting one and a speeder one, and they can be played mostly for fun, trying to get a high score. We have contract brokers. They will present you with various different types of contracts. There are contracts where you have to infiltrate certain areas to go in and steal specific items for a syndicate and then you usually have to, to make a drop. That's the point, you usually get a choice to betray your employer. You can finish the job as normal and get paid or you can actually give the item to another syndicate for hey, reputation anyone? but that's going to hurt your current reputation with whoever employed you in the first place. The better your reputation the better access you have to higher stakes jobs uh, that were, are going to pay a bit more money and those are the ones that are reserved for when you have very high reputation. If you're looking for blaster parts, Lalini can hook you up with something under the table. So there are lots of different conversations that Kay will overhear. These can be things like passwords into areas, the location of hidden treasures in the world, and also opportunities to further position herself with some of the syndicates. We landed on a roster of five distinct worlds, which are Akiva, Toshara, a brand new creation, Tatooine, of course, the fan favorite, Kijimi, and Kento Bite. We really wanted to develop something that, that was fully grounded and had a lot of rich culture and history. And having an open world game really makes sure that you can actually really explore all of those aspects. Star Wars locations are very, as biomes, very strong statements, like all of Tatooine is a desert. Uh, Kijimi is perpetual night and winter. On Akiva, it's more the winding jungle roads. It's a little bit more narrow. Toshara, the windswept moon, which is fairly fun because it allows us with the Emberine to create ramps and wall rides. We wanted all of the locations to provide players something, whether it's about the world, telling something about the lore of Star Wars, or just the world building we crafted at Massive. So designing the space areas was uh, super fun. So we distinguished there a little bit between regulated space, which is the empire controlled, which is the black space with stars, and then we have the unregulated, more hidden, kind of more dangerous space. It's also a place, of course, where different quests and contracts take you. You should fly in close and have a look. You will definitely find precious things that you need to, at the end of the day, make your ship even more capable to explore further. It's a different type of Star Wars story. Kay is an improviser. She doesn't really go by the books. She wasn't really trained in you know, the ways of one particular fighting style or anything like that. But she's just using whatever it is that she can in order to survive. And I kind of tried my best to bring that into the music itself. Sometimes I'll use found objects. I'll play real instruments, but intentionally play them the wrong way. Like you know, playing a guitar on the wrong side, using the tuning pegs as those strings instead of the actual guitar. These are improvised instruments rather than 
well-defined, um, perfected ones. We did a lot of uh, ambience recording trips, which not only gives us freedom in terms of implementation, but also gives us a lot of this unique source that makes us stand out. You'll be able to hear the score and also diegetic music sort of react to the story that Tay is undertaking and bring life to those environments. It's the first open world Star Wars game and figuring out what that experience is like, I think we landed on something that feels unique from any of the Star Wars games that we've made so far. The game is loaded with references to Star Wars comics, Star Wars books, uh, but of course all of the films and characters that players love. We really think that players are going to discover many, many, many nods and they're all intentional.